life we're coming to point number two in point number two we're looking at the sinless sanctifier of all saints look at Hebrews chapter 13 reading from verse 12 wherefore Jesus also remember she shall bring forth a son she shall bring forth a son and that shall call his name Jesus for he that Jesus will save all his people from their sins now it doesn't limit the sins there that is going to save his people from you'll save them from external sins you'll save them from inbred sin you'll save them from casual sin you'll save them from common sin you'll save them from habitual sinning you'll save them from personal peculiar sins it will save these people from their sins at salvation we are saved from the outward external sin at sanctification that inbred sin and the depraved nature and the thing that is in there that is uh, pulling people down dragging people down the salvation of Christ also covers that wherefore Jesus also that he might sanctify the people with his own blood suffered without the gate is provided already. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, it says, Let us go forth, therefore, it's done it. Let's go to him. Is provided it. Let's go to him. He is the sanctifier. Let us go to him that he might sanctify the people with his own blood let us go to him in consecration let us go to him with expectation let us go to him believing that he can do it let us go to him with laying everything on the altar and saying entirely completely absolutely i belong to you i will not look in any other direction you are my savior you are my lord you are my sanctifier you are my king you are my leader you are my controller i put everything in your hand let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp bearing its reproach in verse 14 it says for here we have no continuing city but we seek one to come in first john chapter 3 verse 5 it tells us first john chapter 3 verse 5 and you know that he was manifested to take away our sins and in him is no sin take away our sin he has taken away my sin look at the way you are saying it be it confirmed in your life in jesus name three things we're looking at number one the provision of emmanuel our sanctifier the provision of emmanuel our sanctifier number two the passionate prayer of earnest saints number three the possession of the entirely sanctified let's look at number one the provision of emmanuel our sanctifier in matthew chapter 1 verse 23 it says behold a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted God with us. Look at the depth of the miracle working power of God. Look at the height of the miracle working power of God. Look at the length and the breadth of the miracle working power of God. A virgin shall be with child. It's never happened before that time. A virgin shall be with child, and then it happened. If that could happen, 
according to the promise God gave in the Old Testament. I want you to, when you get back home, look at promises God had given in the Old Testament and see how deep they are and see how impossible for man to have that fulfilled by himself. If God could give the promise, the prophecy, a virgin shall conceive and it actually happened, every other promise will be fulfilled. And then it says when he gives back to that child, his name will be Emmanuel, God with us. That means the same God that saved us is still waiting there. He wants to do the next one. He wants to sanctify. He wants to do something seemingly impossible, incredible. He wants to sanctify the heart of man. And he's able to do it because he is Emmanuel, God with us. Look at Psalm 130, Psalm 130. Verse 7, Psalm 130. We're looking at verse 7. Let Israel hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy, and with him is plenteous redemption, deep redemption, great redemption. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, and he shall redeem Israel from all his iniquities. He shall redeem redeem Israel from all his iniquities. That's Emmanuel. He can do it. He will do it in Jesus' name. In Titus chapter 2, reading from verse 14. Titus chapter 2, reading from verse 14, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. That's what he can do. Let's say I was dormant, dead, like a dead log of wood. I wasn't moving. Nothing challenged me. I didn't have any fire, any passion, any zeal in me. And then it looks impossible for me to be able to raise myself up and have a zeal for good works. Emmanuel, our sanctifier, can get to me there. And then he speaks a word, and his word is like fire. And it gets into me. And then all the deadness in my nature, all the deadness in my constitution, all the deadness in my life, he takes away by a single stroke, by a single word. And then he purifies me to become a peculiar, unique person. And then he makes me zealous of good good works. He can do it for every one of us. He will do it in your life. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 2 and I'm reading from verse 9. It says in Hebrews chapter 2 verse 9, but we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor that he by the grace of God he, by the grace of God, shall taste death for every man. And then in verse 10, it says, For it became him, for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons to glory. Bringing many sons unto glory. As you look at the descendants of Adam, the offspring of Adam, and everything is shameful. Look, look at their story in chapter 4 of Genesis. Look at their story in chapter 5 of Genesis. Look at their story in Genesis uh, chapter, chapter 6. Look at their story in, in Psalm 14. Look at their story in Psalm 53. Look at their story in Romans chapter 3. It's like everything is degenerate. Everything is defiled. Everything is dirty. Everything is shameful. But now he comes Christ and he is that Emmanuel our sanctifier and he brings many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect 
through sufferings and then he tells us in verse 11 he says for both he that sanctified and they who are sanctified are all of one for which cause is not ashamed to call them brethren he will not be ashamed of you he will not be ashamed of you here on earth and up there in heaven he'll not be ashamed of us in jesus name let's come to number two there number two there is the passionate prayer of earnest saints he wants to do that for us but you know salvation if we're going to get salvation we have to pray we have to go to him we have to show him we want that salvation not a so-so salvation not a make-believe salvation salvation that heaven will recognize and say he is saved salvation that the spirit of god will bear witness in the heart he is saved the same thing for sanctification we come already we know about the prophecy of christ we know about the promise and provision of Christ, but now we come passionate in prayer. In uh, Jeremiah chapter 29, reading from verse 12, Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. I did hear your amen there. He will answer your prayer. I said it will answer your prayer. When you pray for healing for the body, the body that will go to the grave, he answers. When you pray for money, the money that will not be spent beyond the point of death, he answers your prayer. When you pray for marriage, life partner, the life partner that is just for us here because there's no marriage in heaven he answers your prayer when you pray for children like anna prayed for a child the lord answers prayer he will answer your prayer if you pray for those other things and god answers when you pray for this sanctification that takes us right to the presence of god in heaven he answered all the other prayers he will answer this one Look at Buster Tina in Buster Tina, and you shall seek me and find me when you shall search for me with all your heart. It will do it for you. Let's come to number three here. Number three, the possession of entire sanctification. Possession of entire sanctification and look at first john chapter 3 and we're looking at verse 3 in first john chapter 3 verse 3 and every man that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure purifies himself that doesn't mean you will not pray you just do it and try your luck by yourself if you're going to purify yourself it means to take yourself to the purifier to the sanctifier and to the one that is able to make you clean and pure and righteous and holy within and without whiter than snow as you take yourself to him and you stay there and you abide there i will not let you go except you sanctify me that work of grace will be done in your life it will be done in your soul in your spirit in your body it will be done in jesus name chapter 4 verse 17 chapter 4 first john chapter 4 verse 17 herein is a love made perfect you know we know that love is very important love one another as i have loved you that the world may believe that the father has sent me this is the new commandment he has given unto us brethren let us not love in words only but in deed and in truth a kind of love agape love the love of god in our heart shared abroad by the holy ghost now we know that when we're born again we love god we love one another but the love 
is up and down. Sometimes we're on the valley, sometimes we're on the mountain top, sometimes the love depends on the happenings around us. When we're happy, we love. When we're not too happy and we're thinking about something, our thinking will give us some sinking feeling and then we don't love so much. But then when it comes in our heart and it purges our heart and our life does not depend on the happiness of the day, our lives do not depend on what we see or what we feel, or what we think, or what people do, or what people do not do, then he perfects the love. And he does that because he is Emmanuel. He has all the power. And when we pray unto him, he'll fulfill it in Jesus' name. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Look at this. Because as he is, so are we. Not when we get to heaven, in this world, as he is, love always flowing. Look at Jesus. Look at his love. He had been beating. They put a crown of thorns on his head. He even fell down under, uh, the, you know, under the cross. But then he knew all that would happen. And before the, he got to that situation in the garden, some of the people came to arrest him. And Peter said, you'll not do that while I'm here. And he threw the sword and he cut off the ear. But you see, Jesus Christ, the Lord, always flowing, always there, even though he faced betrayal, the love always there, he faced all the beating and the scourging, the love was still always there, he bent down and took that ear and performed the miracle and fixed up the ear again, as he is, so are we in this world. That's what it does when we possess entire sanctification. He can do it. He will do it. And Christ will be magnified in our lives in Jesus' name. Look at, look at verse 18 there. In verse 18, there is no fear in love. You know, when we're born again, we love everybody, we love friends, but we know that our parents we love them, they may persecute us we love them, but we also fear them we know that after we are saved our lives are changed there are people around us, our neighbors they will see us and say what's that? you mean you'll not do this again, do that again we love them but we fear them but we come back to God. We say, Lord, I want to love like Jesus loved. He loved the Pharisees. He knew what they were planning. He knew their conspiracies, but he never feared them. And he knew Herod. He knew Pilate. And then Pilate said, are you this? Are you that? He kept quiet. You don't answer me. Don't you know I have power? To release you and power to crucify you you couldn't have any power why if not for the plan of God what power could you have he loved them but he never feared them that's what sanctification does he puts the love you love your neighbor you love the sinners you love the persecutors you love everyone but fear is gone out of your heart towards them in Jesus' name. And you know, when you don't fear, you love freely. You love with all your heart. You're not afraid of the consequences. They misinterpret your love, you love them. And they want to test you whether it is real love or not. You keep on loving them. When he sanctifies us, he purifies us, there is no fear in love. But perfect love casteth out fear. 
because fear has torment. When you fear, you are tormenting yourself. When you fear, you give yourself hypertension. When you fear, you give yourself heart problem. When you fear, your mind is affected and you think wrong and it affects your health. My table shot in your life. Fear has torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. The Lord will perfect his love in our hearts in Jesus' name. He'll do it for me. Say it aloud, he'll do it for me. What will your life be? What will your progress be? What will your usefulness be if you fear nobody on earth and you just love everybody all the time? You will climb the highest mountain. I'm talking to you. I'm prophesying it your life. You will climb the highest mountain in Jesus' name. Let's come to point number three now. Point number three, the smitten circle of the sick. Here is Christ. And this Christ is the one that succors us, supports us, strengthens us, and sustains us. Because that's what he came to do. He came to save us from sin and from the consequence of sin. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 9, but we'll see Jesus. You will see Jesus. At the point of need in your life, you will see Jesus. In all the predicaments that might come or happen, you will see Jesus in Jesus' name. But we'll see Jesus who is made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, shall taste death, for every man. Look at verse 14. In verse 14, it says, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. Say amen there. Amen. I'm going to ask you a question that you know think of in your mind. Is Satan as powerful today as it was in the Old Testament? Answer now. That he might destroy him. Destroy him. That had the power of death. There are people when they pray, they pray as if Satan is still like he was at the Garden of Eden. So mighty, so powerful, so cunning, so crafty, and it's going to bring them down. They pray as if they're living in the days of David when Satan pushed him, propelled him tempted him and made him do something you know? and thousands of people that but you know Christ on the cross through his death destroyed him that had the power of death that is the devil many people pray and they think about Satan as in the gospels before Christ went to the cross He's still bothering them. He's still running after them. He's still holding them down. He's still making them sick. He's still, um, you know, kind of disorganizing, you know, all the plans they have in their lives. They never realize what happened to Satan at the cross of Calvary. That Jesus Christ destroyed him that had the power of death. That is the devil. That is the power of Satan is canceled in your life. When you have headache, don't give the credit to the devil. 
the devil is giving them headache. No, maybe you didn't sleep enough. Maybe you didn't have enough rest. Maybe you've been going on and on without having rest. And your body is sending signals to you. Slow down, rest for some time, relax, and then move on. Don't give all the credit to the devil. Maybe uh, you have constipation. The devil has come again. I'm having runny stomach. Maybe you overate. Maybe you ate at the wrong time. Maybe you didn't take care what you are eating. Maybe the water you you know you should drink. You did not drink enough water. Don't give the devil credit. That Satan has no power in your life anymore. You're free. What are you? You are free in Jesus' name. If you are thinking of the devil every time, you'll dream of the devil. Because, you know, every time you're thinking, devil is behind the door, devil is, you know, over there, devil is over there. You know, human beings do some things and then uh, you say that is Satan. It's not Satan, it's them doing that thing. And if you just know it's human being, it's not Satan, you'll have the victory all through your life. You'll be more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. Look at verse 15 there. In verse 15 it says, And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject unto bondage. Now, you are saved, you are a child of God, and you are even sanctified, and the Lord's presence and power is with you, but you do not know that Satan has been conquered and all your lifetime you are subject to bondage. You cannot think free. You cannot walk free. You cannot live free. And there is Satan behind the door all the time. You hear a particular noise. There is Satan. And you hear another one by the window. It's a bird that is, you know, peeking at the window there. But you say, Satan, you are in bondage all your life life you are free tonight in jesus name and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject unto bondage look at verse 18 in verse 18 for in that he himself has suffered being tempted he is able to succor them that are tempted he will support you it will sustain you. It will succor you. And it will lift you up. That Red Sea will not drown you in Jesus' name. Three things. Number one, thorough deliverance from the consequences of sin. Number two, triumphant dominion and cure of all sicknesses. Every sickness.